The story begins with the main character successfully graduating from school and entering the university where he will study in the coming years. A new student compares the school to his small town high school and realizes that the place is simply huge. The main character's name is Lin Yang, he is 19 years old, and he is now a student at Daiichi Medical University Shinsei. The guy grew up in a poor family on an ordinary farm, and he is also the first university student in his family. The young guy immediately began to look at all the advantages of this establishment. Of course, the first thing he noticed were the beautiful girls walking in the courtyard of the university. But Lin Yang also saw high competition in the face of handsome guys who also studied here. But in this case, the guy had his seducer ring, which he bought for 8 yuan and firmly believes that it can help him. The guy's thoughts were distracted by a girl who called him in her gentle voice and tapped him on the shoulder. Turning around, Lin Yen saw a girl who introduced herself as Lin Lele, she was from the music department. The student also decided to show his interest and introduced himself to a new acquaintance. The guy immediately appreciated the girl's appearance and thought that if such a beauty approached him, then the ring was really worth its 8 yuan. Lele told the guy about the university party and invited him, adding that there would be a lot of people there and he could meet everyone. The embarrassed guy scratched his head and said that he would definitely attend the party. The girl waved her hand to the guy and said that they could meet in building A. Lin Yen appreciated the cute girl and thought that it would be nice for him to get to know her better. But the thoughts of the joyful Lin Yang were stopped by a big man who appeared out of nowhere and invited the student to talk. The newcomer could not resist the huge guy and he had to go along with him. The big guy took the guy to the park to the same big guys like himself, who were waiting for a couple. The bully asked the newcomer if he had confused anything, hinting at his conversation with Lin Lele. Lin Yen understood what was being said and hesitantly tried to explain that the girl was just his classmate and they talked for a while. The guy's answer did not convince the evil big man, and he immediately hit him in the jaw before he even had time to finish. The student could not withstand a strong blow to the face and flew into the bushes that stood behind him. The bully didn't stop at one blow and pulled the poor guy closer to his face by the collar. The scumbag told Lin Yen that if he saw him next to that girl again, he would be in trouble. The newcomer was a difficult guy and someone like him couldn't scare him, so he found the strength in himself and responded to the bully with his own blow. The big man examined the blood under his nose and ordered his friends to finish with the jelly. A crowd of big guys threw the guy on his back and began beating him, feeling their advantage. But a teacher came to the aid of the new student and ordered the hooligans to stop. The leader of the entire gang saw the old man and ordered all his guys to quickly get out of here. The teacher approached the wounded Lin Yen and asked if he knew these thugs. The student said he had no idea who they were and thanked him for his help. The teacher remembered that he had seen them in the gym and said that tomorrow they needed to talk to the hooligans. The man took out a small notepad and pen from his jacket and began to write something down. The teacher handed a small note to Lin Yen and told him to take it to the university and they would pay for his treatment. The wounded student thanked the teacher for everything and was already moving away from this park. The guy was filled with a desire for revenge, and he promised himself that he would still overtake all the hooligans. But now his main problem was pain and bleeding, for which it was better to go to the hospital. Unexpectedly for the guy, the seducer's ring began to draw blood into itself and shine brightly. The 8 yuan ring glowed brighter and brighter, and Lin Yang also noticed a strange trembling throughout his body. The guy's nose stopped bleeding, the pain disappeared and all the wounds disappeared, as if he had been healed. The story moves forward two hours ago, when Lin Yen walked between the streets of a new city. A man who was selling small jewelry called the guy to come up to him. The guy was interested in the man and, approaching, he asked the seller what he wanted and why he called him. The man pointed with his hand to the decorations that were lying on the floor and the student noticed that there were a lot of them. The seller complimented the guy, saying that there was something special in his eyes and that he had a bright future. The guy did not become modest and said that he himself knew about his bright future, he also added that he was the only student in his village and was always different from others. The seller laughed at the self-confident Lin Yen and added that he was not perfect and the guy had flaws. The man highlighted that the main disadvantage was that the student was ugly and completely ugly, these words wounded the guy right in the heart. The old man began to look through his assortment of jewelry and tried to find a ring for the guy. The man chose a ring with a lilac stone and said that it might suit a promising student. 
the seller said that as soon as the guy puts it on his finger, he will immediately become beautiful and attractive. The man was good-natured and said that he could sell the ring for only 998 yuan. The guy was skeptical about the properties of the ring and said that no one in this world would buy it for that kind of money. But the guy was interested in the decoration itself, and he said that he would buy it for no more than 3 yuan. The old man accepted the bargaining attempts and offered a price of 88 yuan. The guy first offered 5 yuan, and the old man 48, the student responded by offering 8 and the seller thought about it. The deal took place, the man agreed to the guy's price and the joyful Lin Yen tried on the ring on his finger. Despite the huge bargaining, the man himself was satisfied, because he found the ring in a trash can. The story returns to our time, where Lin Yen is lying on his bed and trying to scratch the ring. The ring was healing right before our eyes, despite all the students' efforts, there were no traces left on the jewelry itself. Lin Yen was initially afraid that it might be a ring from some grave or something. The frightened guy called the jewelry salesman an asshole and continued his attempts to damage the ring. After half an hour of his attempts, the guy stopped and was very tired, sighing heavily, he buried his face in the pillow. Lin Yen tried to remove the ring, but he failed, and he thought that the jewelry was cursed. After the guy tried to remove the ring, he was enveloped in a strange pink gas that came from the jewelry. The pink gas made the guy sweat and his bed became very hot and the student himself was tempted to sleep. Lin Yen fell exhausted on the bed and the pink gas from the ring quickly put him to sleep. The guy woke up in the middle of white and thick smoke, trying to figure out where he ended up and was it a dream? The student walked around for a long time and again fell through the pink smoke that was in his room. The guy landed and while he was trying to look around where he was, the silhouette of a girl appeared near him. The student quickly noticed the stranger next to him and immediately realized that it was a girl. The girl was very beautiful and Lin Yen immediately noticed her figure and clothes. The guy tried for a long time to figure out where he was now and decided that it was probably a wet dream. Lin Yen continued to look around, trying to figure out whether the girl in front of him was real or was he still in a dream. The student still tried to convince himself that this was just a dream, which means he could touch the girl. The beauty saw the guy reaching out his hand to her and sighed heavily in response to this. The guy's hand moved sharply to his throat, after which he began to choke and twist in pain. The student began to sweat, and he wondered why her sigh could make him cringe like that. Lin Yen looked at the girl again and thought that she looked very familiar, but he couldn't remember who she was or where he saw her. The girl pressed the guy's head to her chest and said that she was very glad to have him back, and she also called him her favorite person. From overexcitement, Lin Yan's heart began to beat much faster, and he even heard characteristic knocking sounds. But these sounds were not the heart, but the guys who were knocking on the door and asking the student why he locked himself. The guys behind the door demanded that their neighbor immediately open the door and let them in. Lin Yan himself only regretted that he was taken from such a cool dream back to reality. When the student opened the door, he met his neighbors, who noticed that the guy was in no hurry to open the door and therefore asked what he was doing here? The guy with glasses looked at Lin Yen and asked him about the excess energy in his body. Another student asked why his bed was not made and implied that their neighbor was doing something indecent. Lin Yen himself understood that it would be difficult to explain himself, which meant he was in deep trouble in front of his neighbors. One of the new friends told the guy that he shouldn't do this alone and also offered his help in finding a girl. Lin Yang said that he was too lazy to talk to the guys and that's why he was saying goodbye to them right now. It had already become significantly dark outside, and the student was trying to sleep after a hard day at the university. Just like during the day, before going to bed the guy was enveloped in pink discharges that emanated from the ring. At 9 in the morning, Lin Yan's ringtone, which was on the alarm clock, came from Lin Yan's phone. While the cheerful song was coming from the phone, the guy tried with all his might not to hear it and sleep longer. The student looked at his body and said in surprise that he had a great night's sleep and was now full of energy and strength. The guy went to the bathroom for water treatments and stood in front of the mirror to brush his teeth. But he was surprised by the state of his body, he became wider, the bags under his eyes disappeared and in general the guy himself began to look great. His shirt couldn't fit on the student's prettier body, and he thought that he just grew up overnight. Lin Yan's whole body felt strange, as if he had fallen asleep as one person and woke up as a different person. In order to better understand his transformation, the student went to the university park. 
The guy was walking through the park and holding his head, trying to understand what could have happened to him and why he began to feel some kind of power. Lin Yen himself needed to test his new body in action and so he headed towards the huge cobblestone. The guy's main guess was that it was all an illusion and he didn't gain any strength, to check this he had to lift a huge boulder. Much to his surprise, Ling Yen had no problem lifting the huge boulder. The guy picked up a huge lump like a candy wrapper and threw it into the water with the same ease. Throwing a stone into the water, the student wanted to make sure that it really weighed a lot and that it was not a decoration. The stone caused a huge wave from its contact with the water, which means it was indeed very heavy, which surprised the superman. The guy continued to walk in the park and said that he could guess what could have happened, but he had no evidence. But there was good news for Lin Yen, he now looks cool and can quickly gain the attention of girls. The student was distracted from his thoughts by hooligans with whom he had recently fought in the same park. The main bully called the guy strong and noticed that he could even walk and talk after yesterday's beating. The bully reminded the guy about how they were interrupted yesterday and assured that Lin Yen would get even more today. The guy himself was also looking forward to this meeting and said that he was ready to correct yesterday's misunderstanding, and he also asked the bully not to run away. The big man appreciated the guy's courage and suggested that something had grown in him over the past night. But the big guy was not alone and ordered his friends to attack the daring newcomer with the whole crowd. The two guys accepted the order of their leader and attacked one Ling Yen with their fists. One of the guys rushed at the newcomer before anyone else, but the student's reaction was enough to dodge the attack. The changes in his body had a great effect on Lin Yang's fighting skills, and he was able to hit his opponent in the jaw himself. The big man fell to the ground with a bloody face, like a sack of potatoes after being hit by a rookie. Lin Yang himself took the initiative in the fight and attacked his offenders on his own. A couple of blows, loud screams from the hooligans, and a few minutes later the entire gang of hooligans was left lying beaten on the grass. The main bully watched how the puny guy beat all his guys and already decided to take up the matter himself. Lin Yen reminded the big man not to run away like a girl and to fight against him with dignity. After a long run, the student hit his offender in the face with his powerful fist. From the force of the blow, the big man joined his friends and also fell helplessly on the grass. The bully wiped his nose from the blood that came from it and tensely waited for Lin Yen to continue. The student himself did not finish off his opponent, but instead took his student card out of his pocket. All the information about the guy was written there, his name was Linda Hai, he is a second year student in the sports department. The guy threw the ticket on the grass and warned the athlete not to cross his path in the future, otherwise the outcome would be even worse. The joyful student had already left the park and realized that all his powers were not a dream, and that he really had new skills. While the guy was walking around the university area, he noticed something strange about the girls. All the girls had a strange aura around them, each one glowing with a different light. Lin Yen rubbed his eyes to see if this was all real or if he was just imagining things. After the guy rubbed his eyes, nothing changed, a strange aura remained around the girls. The guy's classmate distracted him from his thoughts and reminded him that their classes would start soon, so he invited him to go there together. Lin Yen examined his friend and realized that everything was fine with the guys and there was no aura around them. The student looked closely at each girl and tried to understand what the color of the aura could mean and where it came from. Two girls were discussing the guy's strange looks on themselves and decided that he was just a strange guy or a pervert. Lin Yen peered at one of the girls who was standing nearby for a long time, and she also noticed it. For a long time, the student couldn't figure out what to do when the guy looked at her like that and thought that he liked him and that fate was bringing them together. Lin Yan's friend was very shy about his friend and thought that his strange looks at the girls were due to overexcitement last night. Lin Yang had already entered the classroom with his friends, but questions remained in his mind about the strange aura. The student stared at each girl and tried to understand what the glowing aura around them meant. The guy's classmates began to seriously discuss the fact that their new student could be a pervert if he looked at every skirt like that. One of them suggested that he just needed to let off steam, and the other was afraid that the guy would do something unusual. The door to the classroom opened and the teacher came in, announced the start of the lesson and asked the students for silence. Lin Yen paid attention to the woman because she also had an aura around her, just like the other girls. The guy's gaze was fixed on the teacher but he noticed that the aura around her was much weaker than that of the students. 
The woman became embarrassed and asked the guy why he was looking at her like that, suggesting that there was something unusual on her face. The guy's roommates began to worry even more about the guy and disappointedly told each other that their new student was also being turned on by the teachers. While the woman was telling the topic of the lesson, the guys distracted Lin Yen from his thoughts and called him closer to them. The guys said that they wanted to dump him on the girl so that he would no longer stare at the others at the university and come up with his fantasies. The frightened guy asked his neighbors why they were watching him and asked them to leave him alone at least during class. After a short conversation with his friends, the guy decided to open the textbook and see what they had to learn this year. But the student unexpectedly discovered that all the information from the textbook was quickly absorbed in his head. To confirm his guesses, he began to quickly flip through the pages without even reading them. Despite the fact that the guy didn't even go into detail and just looked through the pages, the information in his head was absorbed quickly. Slamming the textbook shut, Lin Yen began to guess that his transformation affected not only his muscles and strength, but also his intellect. The guy slammed his fists on the textbook and asked the whole class why it's so easy to study here. Apparently the student himself did not expect to shout it so loudly and the entire audience immediately turned to look at him. The teacher told the guy to choose his words more correctly, and if he had questions, just ask them quietly. Lin Yang apologized to his classmates and the teacher and explained that he was just daydreaming a little. The student was very tense and grabbed his nose. He realized that all this was not a hallucination. The guy simply flipped through the textbook and, looking at it with one eye, was able to remember absolutely everything, including formulas and even pictures. The prodigy came to terms with this and realized that such abilities could be used for good in order to complete the entire course with excellent marks. The bell rang at the university and the couple ended, Lin Yen asked his friends to excuse him from his last classes, because the guy would need to leave. The student went outside and thought about how such enormous power could be used for good. To answer his question, Lin Yang went to the city market to find something to do in his free time. The guy walked past a small warehouse where men were loading huge bags into a car. Lin Yen immediately paid attention to the movers and realized that this job would be ideal for his abilities. The student decided for himself that he had to find out exactly how his new abilities would help him in practice. The guy approached the handyman and said that he wanted to talk to the boss about working in this place. A man came down the stairs and asked the guy about his place of study and he replied that he was from a medical university. The employer advised the guy to change his mind before it was too late, because he already had experience working as students, but they didn't last even a week. Lin Yang explained that he came here from the village and would have no problem carrying heavy weights on his back. The man was wary of this idea, but still decided to give the guy a chance and called Xiao Hu to give him a job. Xiao Hu was a beefy man who stood next to a packed truck and called to a newcomer. The man pointed to the bags behind him and said that these were rice that needed to be taken to the warehouse, he also asked the guy to be careful because no one would pay for his injuries. Lin Yang walked up to the truck and began his work by picking up the first bag of rice in his hands. The student looked at the bag and realized that he hardly felt its weight, which meant that he needed to take a lot more of them. The strong guy began to load more and more bags into the hill and managed to carry five of them at a time. The men who worked with the guy appreciated the ability of the brat, who carries heavy bags like pillows. Each of the bags weighed about 200 kilograms, but to Lin Yen they were just empty boxes. Meanwhile, the student himself was looking for ways to beautifully sort bags in a warehouse. The guy threw heavy bags with the fingers of one hand, like pillows into a hill, one on top of the other. Other workers looked at the prodigy and could not understand where such strength could come from in a puny boy. Lin Yen calculated that one pass would take 20 seconds, which meant he could move the entire contents of the truck in five minutes. One hour later, employers couldn't believe their eyes when they saw a huge mountain in the warehouse. Then the men examined the truck and saw that the guy had carried 700 bags of 200 kilograms each in just one hour. Xiao Hu told his partner that he was afraid of the newcomer, but the boss asked him not to worry, but to simply pay for a good job. The man approached the student and thanked him for his excellent work, after which he explained the salary rates that apply at the warehouse. The employer introduced himself as Air Hay and said that the newcomer was able to earn $110 today. A joyful Lin Yen was already leaving the place, and the boss asked him to come again when he needed work. 
Xiao Hu told his boss that he could pay the newcomer himself to help him with his work. The man said that this guy is not so easy and will definitely be useful to them in the future, which means his payment should be good. Lin Yen went to another part-time job where he had to lift water bottles up the stairs. While the new employer was asking if the young student was sure that he could run up the stairs, the guy himself said that he would get water without it. The guy loudly shouted to the resident of apartment 401, is he ready to accept delivery? The man went out onto the balcony and asked the boy what he was talking about, hinting that he would have to take the stairs. First, Lin Yen took the water bottle with one hand and began to estimate its weight in order to toss it. The guy, of course, was very tense, but he managed to launch a bottle of water high into the air. To the client's great surprise, the guy's sniper throw was successful and the bottle landed successfully on the balcony. The employer and the client still could not understand how exactly the guy managed to get to the desired floor and apartment so accurately. The third job for Lin Yang was the Fun Yun restaurant, where the chef immediately explained that the main feature of their cuisine is the spicy pork chop. The man shouted at his cooks to let them know that thousands of customers came just for the famous chop. The chef was outraged that his workers took two hours to butcher one pig, at such a speed they would not be able to make enough preparations. One of the chefs brought Lin Yang to the boss and said that this guy came for an interview and wanted to work as a butcher. The student greeted the boss and confirmed these words, adding that he needed money. The chef laughed at the puny guy and asked the new butcher if he could even lift a knife with his thin hands. The student replied that if he was paid $2 per kilogram of meat, he could cut up anything. The man did not want to believe the guy's words and took the pork carcass onto the table, after which he called the newcomer to him. The chef asked the student to cut the pork in front of him, if, of course, he could do it, and if the guy was not ready for this, then he could get out of here. Lin Yang said that this was a great idea, considering that he himself did not have much time for the interview. The cooks began to discuss the young butcher and one of them suggested that he was simply interested in the payment in the ad and that he could not cope with the job. The new butcher took the knife in his hands and began to cut up a large pork carcass. It only took a few blows for the guy to complete his job. The chef looked at how not only the pork suffered from the guy's blows, but also the wooden board that was under it. The guy apologized for ruining the board and told the chef that next time he would hold back his blows. The student took two pieces of cut board and asked if he could not pay for it. The boss was impressed with the guy's skills and said that he could forget about the damaged board. Lin Yen heard his boss's words and continued to do his work with the carving knives in his hands. With each blow of the knife, the guy got better and better, he was able to cut pork much faster than all the kitchen staff. The chef was even more impressed with the skills of his new employee and said that he had a real talent for this business. Lin Yen, after a difficult day of part-time work, came to the dormitory, where, lying on the bed, he thought about how he could earn money to pay for the next academic year. One of the roommates noticed that the guy had money and decided to ask where he got it from, to which the prodigy replied about a part-time job. The guy was skeptical about this idea and suggested that his friend give up his part-time job due to his busy school schedule. The neighbor also said that if a friend has money problems, they can lend him up to 2000. Another neighbor grabbed the guy by the chin and confirmed that they had money, after which he asked how much an evening with friends would cost. Lin Yen did not appreciate the joke and, throwing away his friend's hand, asked them not to talk nonsense and stop mocking. The guy with glasses said that part-time work is not the best solution, because they still have to study, and he also suggested that the guy work as tutors, because they earn $35 an hour. Lin Yen asked his friends not to worry and explained that he did not need money, but simply decided to earn some money. One of the friends praised the guy's idea to rest for the night and said that he hoped for his friend's generosity. The guys were walking along the corridor and one of them said that it was finally time to take a break from boring everyday life and cramming. The guys went to spend the night in a small street cafe in the city center. Classmates ate, drank, talked and had fun with each other after the hard everyday life of a student. Lin Yen was already finishing his glass and enjoying his time in the company of friends with heavy sighs. One of the company noticed that they were not the only ones from the university here, which meant they could meet many acquaintances in this place. Lin Yen heard his friend's words and began to turn around in search of familiar faces from the school. The guy's eyes were able to notice Lulu, who was sitting at a table not far from the guys with her classmates. 
The first thing the student noticed was the strong aura that was around the girl, it was more powerful than the others. The guy also felt strange emotions towards the girl, who seemed to be pulling him towards her. A classmate again asked Lin Yen where he managed to look this time, the student got up from the table and told his friends that he needed to leave for a couple of seconds, and he also added that he would quickly return. The guy walked slowly and nervously to the table where Yang Lulu was sitting with her friends. The guy at the table noticed another student approaching them and asked who he was. Lin Yen stood in front of the girl and, fixing his gaze on her, asked if she remembered him. The girl tried for a long time to remember the guy, but still said his name correctly and asked again if she had made a mistake. The embarrassed guy scratched his head and confirmed that he was Lin Yen and recalled how they met on the first day. The ring on the guy's hand began to create a small cloud of pink smoke as the girl came closer. Lin Yen himself didn't know how exactly to start a conversation, so he asked who these guys were sitting next to the girl. Lulu replied that these were her classmates and they decided to have something tasty to eat for the night. The girl also felt awkward talking to the guy, but continued to look straight at him. She smelled a very strange but delicious smell from Lin Yen, which lured her closer and closer to the guy's body. Lulu couldn't resist the delicious smell and jumped straight into the student's arms. The student snuggled even closer to Ling Yen and did not understand why he began to look so handsome, and she also could not stop hugging him on her own. The guy himself raised his hands up and, looking at the ring, realized that this was all his work again. One of the guys at the table hit his hand and asked Lulu what was she doing with her friend? In the end, the girl managed to lag behind the guy, and she apologized for the sudden surge of tenderness and love. The joyful student told the beauty that it was all nothing and that she should not worry about it. The guy pointed his finger at Lin Yen and asked who this brat is and why Lulu is hugging him. All this was also observed by the guy's roommates, who got up from the table and headed towards the violent guy. The largest of the friends came closer to the boy and warned him not to raise his hand against their friend if he wanted to stay alive. Lulu immediately condemned her classmate, whose name was Feng Xian, and asked what he was doing. The guy reminded the girl that she said that she was alone and had no boyfriends in mind, and now she was hugging some student. The guy's friend asked him to calm down and added that he tried to introduce him to Lulu, but now he would only ruin everything with his behavior. Disappointed, Feng Xian reluctantly accepted his friend's proposals and fell silent for a while. A friend who was sitting at the table with a girl suggested resolving the conflict peacefully and avoiding unnecessary aggression. Lulu explained to the offended guy that before she really didn't even have a boyfriend in mind. The girl said that this all happened before, at that time she still did not believe in love at first sight. Continuing, the student explained that she now thinks that love at first sight is indeed possible. Feng Xian still wasn't reassured by the girl's words, first of all, he was annoyed by the fact that he had made a huge effort just to get to know her, and the student herself liked this runt. Lulu said that Xian is just a friend for her, huge crowds of boys run after the girl, but this does not mean that she should reciprocate everyone. The girl also told the obsessive guy that he was a great person, but, unfortunately, they could not be a couple. Xian decided to throw out all his anger on Ling Yang whom he blamed for all his troubles in the relationship. Even though Ling Yen himself did not want to fight, he had to strike the first blow to calm his opponent down. The guy was very unlucky to fly away from the blow right into the table of the guys who were having dinner nearby. One of the men took the student by the head and asked if he wanted to get into serious trouble right now. The guy tried to apologize to the guys, but the offender's fist was already flying towards his face. One of the bullies reminded the guy that now would be a great chance to impress his girlfriend. The man looked at Lulu and said that this could indeed be a great chance to show off. Frightened and beaten, Feng Xian tried to apologize to the thugs while they humiliated him. The bully in chief said a simple apology wasn't enough to make him look past his messed up face and ruined evening. The man showed a glass bottle and asked the guy to guess where it would be in a couple of minutes. Lin Yen and Lula thought that the guy was not getting what he deserved and the student tried to stop the humiliation. The girl reminded the bullies that Feng Xian was still her classmate and asked them to stop bullying him immediately. The scumbag laughed at the student's words and asked who she was so that he would listen and lie under her. The man said that his name is San Eru and no one has the right to tell him what to do and what not to do. Lulu was a little scared, but she still decided to remind the bully that hitting people is wrong. San Eru did not listen to the girl's words, 
her teachings only caused laughter from the scumbag. The man extended his hand to the girl and said that if you hit people in the wrong way, he would now hurt her greatly. The bully's palm was almost on the young student's cheek, but he was stopped by Lin Yang, who intercepted the blow. The guy explained to the aggressive man that touching people without their consent is also wrong. San Eru tried to break free from the guy's grip with his hand, but he couldn't because of the prodigy's strength. The man asked the guy who he was and ordered him to immediately let go of his hand. Lin Yang promised that he would only let go of the bully's hand if he stopped this whole mess. The scumbag did not agree with the fact that the teenager was trying to calm him down and he took a knife out of his pocket, after which he began to threaten the guy with it. Lulu was worried about her friend and warned that the enemy had a knife. The girl was in vain worried about the guy, because Lin Yen himself managed to dodge the knife very easily. The teenager decided not to ignore this and squeeze the bully's hand with great force. The man felt the full strength of the student and began to scream from unbearable pain. Lin Yen warned the scumbag that from now on he still owes him money for ruined clothes. The rest of the gang of hooligans saw how their comrade was beaten by a teenager and immediately rushed at him with improvised weapons. First of all, Lin Yen was afraid for Lulu and grabbed the girl by the hand and asked her to stand behind him. After the guy secured his beloved, he began to beat all the remaining hooligans. There were no problems with the first and second, the drunken thugs fell with just one blow. There were no problems with the third bully either, and Lin Yen knocked him out with a blow to the head. The student already felt victory, but one of his friends warned the guy about an attack from behind. San Eru found a glass bottle and smashed it on the back of the teenager while he still couldn't see anything. Despite the unexpectedness of the blow to the back, the Superman did not even feel it. The angry student knocked out the offender with a side kick, without even turning to look at him. The student's friends immediately realized that the guy was an unusual person and he definitely wouldn't need their help. The guy reminded the bully that he now owed him money for the damaged jacket. San Eru did not resist and immediately took out his wallet from his pocket, and then handed it to the student. The guy counted as much as $400 in cash inside and this made him very happy. The student threw the wallet back at the bully and ordered them to get out of here immediately. The humiliated and beaten thugs walked away while all of Lin Yan's friends admired his fighting skills. The big guy approached the guy and said that it was impressive, he also praised the guy's skills and asked when he would be able to share the technique. Lin Yang understood that he himself didn't really know anything about his skills, so he replied that he would never share the secret. The student went to Feng Xian and handed him all the money he had taken from the hooligans, after which he advised him to go to the hospital. The beaten student asked Lin Yang for forgiveness and thanked him for not leaving him to be torn apart by thugs. Lulu approached the guy and said that she couldn't even think about the guy's fighting skills. The teenager began to be modest and called it basic skills, then he suggested that everyone have dinner together. The guy's friends realized that it was better to leave the guy and the girl alone and, saying that they were tired and overfed, they went to the hostel. Lee's friend also said that she had some business to attend to and left the couple to communicate alone. All the guy and girl's friends quickly ran away, and they were left alone with each other. The couple was left alone and an awkward silence hung between them, which was difficult to dilute. Lulu and Lin Yen were left standing together in silence, not saying a word to each other. The guy realized that it was very awkward to just stand and be silent and he needed to come up with a topic for conversation. The teenager was also wondering what to do next, he could take her hand, but wouldn't that be rushing things too much? The student thought for a long time about whether he should take the girl's hand or not, but still decided. The lovers were already holding hands and Lin Yen, with a trembling voice, wanted to invite the girl to take a walk. But Lulu got ahead of the guy and asked if he wanted to take a walk in the park with her. The couple was already walking through the park, and the girl said that this situation was very confusing for her and that she had fallen in love with the guy too suddenly. The student decided to support the girl's idea, despite his embarrassment, he said that he also liked Lulu. The beauty did not wait and immediately asked the question head on, does Lin Yen want to become her boyfriend? The student himself did not expect such an offer and could not even dream of a relationship with the beauty. Before the guy had time to answer, the girl pressed him to the tree and kissed him passionately on the lips. Lin Yen was very scared, he liked Lulu, but the guy did not expect that their relationship would gain such momentum so quickly. The guy's ring began to emit pink smoke, which attracted the girl. 
The girl smelled pink smoke from the ring and told the guy that she had the same feeling as in the cafe, she felt very warm next to Lin Yen. The guy took Lulu by the shoulders and said that it was late, after which he offered to take her back to the dorm. The girl realized what she had done, it was her first kiss, she tried to understand why she did this and what she was guided by. Frustrated, Lula held her face with both hands and wanted to believe that it was all a dream. Lin Yen noticed the girl's distress and asked with concern if she was okay. The girl said that she could not control herself around the guy and asked him to move away from her. The teenager agreed with her words and said that in this case he would follow her from behind. The guy took Lulu to the dormitory, after which he went to his room to his friends, who were waiting for him with stories. The guys crowded around Lin Yen and each of them asked what happened to Lulu and could they be called a couple? Lin Yen refused and said that nothing special happened, and he also asked the guys to move away from his bed because he wanted to sleep. But the friends could no longer be stopped, they remembered how the guy beat up the hooligans and asked to become his students in order to be invincible in the entire hostel. The guy got nervous and explained that he couldn't train them because he lied about his martial arts skills. One of the guys called his friend a liar and explained that his blows said otherwise. The guy leaned on his neighbor and called his friends to help convince Lin Yen. The student had to promise that he would teach his friends how to fight effectively. The guys were very happy that their neighbor began to study and all three sat down in front of him. One of the guys got into a strange position and suggested starting with the white-boned cat technique. Another guy called it some kind of girly dancing and said that such moves would only scratch your back. Lin Yen thought about what he should tell the guys, he realized that he could just tell them all sorts of nonsense, and not think about the consequences yet. The guy said that the bodies of newly minted students are suitable for martial arts, but now he doesn't have time and training will begin in a month. Each of the students crossed their arms in front of themselves as a sign of gratitude, and they unanimously said that I would wait for my master. As soon as Lin Yang turned away, the guys began to show strange techniques and poses, but the teenager was no longer interested in this. The next day, Lin Yen went to the same warehouse where he first carried sacks from Era Hei. The guy reported to the employer about the completed assignment and asked for his money. The man examined the place and did not understand how the student could move one and a half thousand bags of rice in just an hour. While the first employer was trying to understand the secret of the guy's strength, Lin Yen himself went to his second part-time job. The guy threw bottles of water onto clients' balconies with the same ease as last time. The second employer called the guy the strongest he knows and said that there is a more interesting job than a water delivery guy. The man offered the student to work as a security guard, the pay was decent, about 10,000 a month. The guy understood that with such part-time jobs he could soon earn more than 10,000 a month, so he refused the offer. The last point for today was the Fun Yun restaurant, where the guy came to work as a butcher. Lin Yen was getting better and better at cutting meat in the kitchen each time. The boss could not help but be pleased with the guy who solved all his problems with cutting and preparation, so he called him real gold. The boss reminded the guy to remember to take payment when he was done with his meat work. The guy counted all the money he managed to earn today and realized that at this rate he would quickly save up for education. Even with all the expenses for studying, Lin Yen would still have some free money, so he decided that it was worth taking his friends to karaoke today. That evening, the four of them stood in front of a nightclub, and the big man dissuaded Lin Yen from going there, citing the prices in the establishment. One of the guys said that the guy really works all day long, so it wouldn't be nice if he paid for them to rest. Another neighbor suggested to the guy that the three of them take him to relax and pay for everything. The prodigy refused and explained that he had earned enough money for him and his friends to have fun today. The third comrade reminded that their neighbor is a kung fu master, which means he should definitely not have problems with money. The guys decided among themselves that they should squander as much as they could today and went to the club. The pleasant conversation between the guys was interrupted by a man in a suit, who pushed one of the students and asked to give way to him. One of Lin Yen was outraged by the man's impudence and asked what he was allowing himself to do. The man replied that even dogs know that the owner needs to give way and added that this place is too expensive for people like them. The big man was in earnest, but his friends tried to stop him, citing the fact that they were in a new area and it was better not to conflict with anyone. A group of people in suits came out to help the cocky man, asking why there was so much noise. The man explained to the gentleman that they had a little trouble and he shouldn't worry about it. 
The big man looked at the people in the suit and asked what kind of snobs they were and why they allowed themselves to communicate like that. Lin Yen asked his friend not to disperse the conflict and reminded that they came to this club for karaoke. The student managed to calm the conflict situation and the guys entered the club without any problems. The guys argued about who would sing and in what order, and Lin Yang stated that he had never thought about their love for karaoke. There was a phone next to the student that received a call, and the guy decided to answer the phone. The guy answered the interlocutor and a female voice on the other side asked him if they needed anything else. One of the club employees asked to call a certain girl so that she would come to them. Lin Yen continued to talk on the phone and, due to his drunken state, did not fully understand what they wanted from him. The guy's friend asked him if the girl called him first. Surprised, Lin Yen told his friend that this is exactly what happened. The student adjusted his glasses and told his classmate to choose his words correctly when talking to girls. The guy accepted the information and explained to the girl that he was busy now, after which he asked her for her phone number so that he could call him another time. The girl agreed and, dictating her number, asked the guy to contact her later. Friends immediately attacked the guy with questions about why he needed the number of an unfamiliar girl, hinting at a relationship. But Lin Yen assured his friends that he was not like them and just thought that the girl would continue to pester him, so he lied. A classmate looked displeased at his friend and told the guy that only he knew how to waste opportunities to meet girls. But this whole situation was quickly forgotten when the guy suggested having another drink before singing karaoke. After an hour of wild celebrations, the big man was humming his favorite song for the third time. Lin Yen told his friends that he had drunk too much and now he should go to the restroom. On the way to the bathroom, the guy noticed a girl running past, with an aura around her. The guy opened his eyes wider and saw that there was a very strong aura around the girl. Also, two men in suits ran after the beauty, and Lin Yen guessed that this was all for a reason. The student realized that the girl was in danger and the guys who were pursuing her clearly did not have good intentions. But he didn't have time to figure it out, and without thinking, he ran to help the girl. The chase led the guy to the women's restroom, where the girl hid from her pursuers. One of the guys tried to kick down the stall door with his foot, but he couldn't do it. The guards began to protest against the hooligan and asked him to behave with more restraint. But the guy didn't want to listen to some guards and advised them not to meddle in other people's affairs if they didn't want to die. The surprised guard looked at the guy as he turned around and recognized him as Mr. Lu. The frightened guards apologized for not immediately recognizing the guy and added that he could do whatever he wanted. The frightened girl locked herself in the stall while Lu threatened her and tried with all his might to knock down the door. The girl cried and prayed that someone would notice this and help her get out of here. The beauty dreamed of only one thing, that someone would save her and calm down the aggressive Lu. Lu continued his unsuccessful attempts to break down the door, but he never succeeded. The girl grabbed her chest with both hands and asked at least someone to help her. The man stopped banging on the door and the beauty felt much better when she felt the silence. But suddenly she was frightened by a man's hand, which broke down the door and headed straight towards the girl. The frightened beauty had already said goodbye to her life, expecting to see Lu there, who would take her with him. But luckily for her, it was Lin Yen who assured the girl that she had nothing to fear anymore. To confirm his words, he pointed his finger at the lying Lu with his accomplices. The first thing the girl did was go to the nearest tap to wash herself while the surprised student looked at her. After the water procedures, the victim of persecution still decided to look at her savior. The girl's legs began to give way her voice began to tremble, and her whole body suddenly began to burn. The girl looked at her savior, who understood that something was wrong with her and assumed that she was just drunk. The beauty herself could no longer control herself and attacked the guy with hugs. The girl continued to hug Lin Yang tightly, and the guy himself wondered what was going on here. The action moves to a mansion, where a wealthy young man smokes a cigarette in his bed. The guy got out of bed and said that simple tricks would not work for such a woman. He took the bottle of Viagra in his hand and said that it wouldn't hurt him to take a couple more. The guy poured a handful of pills into his hand and was already expecting a wonderful night with the girl. But all his dreams were interrupted by a call from the phone that lay next to the bed. Over the phone, the guy was told that the girl could not be restrained and she ran away. In the morning, Lin Yen woke up in an unfamiliar place he was lying alone on a double bed. The student got to his feet and realized that all yesterday's events were not a dream, and he also tried to find his clothes. 
The guy discovered that he was wearing nothing, including underwear. At first, Lin Yen thought that he was no longer a virgin and spent the night with a stranger. There was also a version in his head where the girl simply put the guy to sleep and left the room. But these were all just guesses and the teenager decided that he needed to find her and find out everything. The beauty was already in the kitchen and preparing breakfast for herself and her guest. The guy went into the kitchen, and the girl told him that he had slept for quite a long time since yesterday. The teenager looked at the girl confusedly and asked her did she put all his clothes? The girl explained that she washed all the guy's clothes and bought him new ones this morning. The good-natured housewife also took out new panties for Lin Yen and asked him to try them on. The embarrassed guy asked her he should change clothes so that the girl wouldn't see anything. The hostess replied that there was a lot of space in the house and he could do it wherever he wanted. She also added that he should not be shy and change clothes right in the kitchen, because she had already seen everything. Lin Yen did not change clothes in front of the girl and still chose the bedroom. The student changed his clothes and returned back to the kitchen, where the girl was waiting for him at the table. The teenager saw the beauty's gaze, so he asked her why she was looking at him like that. An interested girl asked the guy how old he was and what his name was. Lin Yang introduced himself and added that he was a student and had recently turned 18. The girl also introduced herself, her name was Yun Rong and she was 23 years old. Rong approached the guy and said that when she is next to him, she wants to be closer and closer. When the girl was already right in front of the student's face, she called him her beloved. Confused, Lin Yen decided to lighten the situation and asked about those people who were chasing the beauty in the club. The girl replied that these were Wang Ziting's people, and she also called them bastards who wanted to kidnap her. The teenager asked who Wang Ziting was and learned from the girl's words that this was the general director of the company, Du Yu. Three days ago, Rome Company encountered some problems, so they asked Wang Ziting to borrow five million dollars. The girl could not even think that this scumbag would take the chance to take her to a bar and get her drunk. Rome said that if she had not resisted, she would have already been in Ten's arms, after which she hugged and thanked Lin Yen for saving her. The guy looked at the screen of his phone, it was already 10.30, and he had a lot of work today. Lin Yen explained to the girl that he did not have much time and she guessed that he needed to go. An awkward pause hung over the couple, which the teenager decided to break up with a kiss on the girl's forehead. The guy said that he was studying at a medical college and told the girl that she could visit him in her free time. The student also decided to take the girl's number so that they could call each other next time. When Lin Yen returned to the dormitory, he was immediately attacked by his friends, who were curious about where he had spent the night. The guy lied that his aunt came to him and said that his cousin was sick, so he had to go with him to the hospital. One of the guys sensed the untruthfulness of the story and reminded him that Lin Yen lived far from here and had not spoken about any brother before. The teenager still continued to lie to the last and insisted that he had distant relatives in the city. It was already dark outside and all the guys in the room lay down in their beds. But Ling Yen couldn't sleep, he was thinking about the sharp feelings of Lu Lu and Yun Rong, as well as about his new strength, the guy connected all these events with the appearance of a ring on his finger. The student still had a long time to figure it out, but most of all he was interested in the past of this ring. But in the end, the teenager decided to leave this idea for tomorrow, realizing that throughout the night he would not be able to understand the secret of the ring. The next morning, Lin Yen went to the computer shop to access the network. The guy sat in front of the monitor screen and tried to remember on his own where he could hear the name Wang Ziteng. In order to find more information about the strange guy, he went to the internet. The news related to Wang Ziteng looked very strange, more than once he was seen in nightclubs and using girls. Thanks to the internet, the teenager realized that Wang Ziteng was not such a simple person and neither was his family. The director was a real scumbag, according to articles on the internet, at least seven girls died because of him. Lin Yen himself was annoyed by the news related to the businessman because he considered him a real scumbag. After looking through all the archive news about the strange guy, he decided to look at the latest ones. The student's eyes caught the news that Wang Ziteng would be interviewed in the front of Tianyu Tower. The teenager came up with a plan for revenge, since Rong is now his girlfriend, he cannot let the scumbag just escape justice. To implement his plans, Lin Yen went to the nearest supermarket. Having taken everything he needed, the guy went to the checkout and prepared for that very moment to take revenge on Wang Ziteng. 
Now the CEO of the company is leaving the tower of the Tianyu Corporation, where he is met by journalists. The journalist introduced herself to the guy and said that they had agreed with the secretary about today's interview. Ten looked confident and said that he had been preparing for this interview for several days. The journalist appreciated the guy's mood and said that it would be better for them to start with the finances of the Tianyu company. Among the crowd of journalists and passers-by was a disguised Lin Yen who came to take revenge. The guy stuffed cotton onto his hips, shoulders, and legs so that no one could identify him by smell later. While the businessman was introducing himself to the reporter, Lin Yan gave himself the go-ahead to begin his plan. Teng talked about how he founded Tianyu Company six years ago and initially focused on import and export. The teenager was already running towards the director, who continued to describe the detailed path of his corporation to the top. The guy got as close as possible to Ten and began to swing his hand. The prodigy dealt a powerful blow to the businessman's head, after which he quickly disappeared. Journalists and passers-by looked in horror as the guy quietly crept up to the company boss. One of the bodyguards started calling Mr. Wang to see if he was okay. The guards began to disperse the people, explaining that they, too, could be in cahoots with the criminal. Even though no one was able to find Ling Yang, he showed up once again as he kicked the prone Tang. The general director's glasses broke on his face, and he began screaming in pain throughout the street. The news was already broadcast on TV about how the owner of the Tianyu company was attacked by an unknown attacker. The attacker caused multiple fractures on Wang Ziting's face and legs, who is now hospitalized. The businessman himself, seeing the report, threw the remote control at the screen with all his might, causing the TV to break. The indignant director began to loudly ask his subordinates, who could have done this? The guard said that due to the good disguise they had no idea who it was, and the attacker was so fast that the bodyguards were unable to catch up with him. Ten called his subordinates useless and demanded that they immediately begin searching for the attacker in order to take revenge on him. Yun Rong, who was coming out of the shower at that moment, also heard the news report. The girl was surprised that some guy dared to beat Wang Tzu Teng himself. Although Rong was happy with the payback on the scumbag, she still wanted to find out who this daredevil was. Meanwhile, the attacker managed to run to the university grounds, where he was able to change clothes behind the bushes. Lin Yen was found by his roommate, who asked him about the news that everyone was discussing now. The guy did not hide his joy, showing a video of Wang Ziting being beaten right in the middle of journalists. Lin Yen realized that there was no need to show it and asked if the businessman himself knew that he was beaten today. The friend also told the guy that Lulu had been unable to find him several times today because they had not exchanged phone numbers. The neighbor also said that he called the guy, but he didn't pick up and Lin Yang explained that he was very busy. Li's number was written and said that she had asked to give it to him. The teenager thanked his friend and said that he would definitely call the girl back. The guy dialed the girl's phone number and asked why she had been looking for him all day. Lulu did not hide her joy that the guy called her back and asked if he wanted to go to the aquarium with her. The guy readily agreed, and the student said that they could go there tomorrow morning. Lin Yan assured that he had no plans for tomorrow and said that tomorrow he would completely belong to the girl. The guy wrote down the girl's contact, and Lulu, surrounded by her toys, was glad that she was not refused. At the hospital, Ten continued to reprimand his guards for their poor performance. While the guy was calling his workers useless, his wounds began to open and he felt pain. The bodyguard asked his boss not to be nervous and reminded him to remain calm. Ten said that he already understood this, after which he threw a glass of water right at his employee's nose. The guy's father told his son that there is no use in being angry in this situation and he has already sent people to investigate. Ten asked his father to give this guy into his hands as soon as they caught him, so that he could tear him to pieces himself. The man agreed with his son's words and added that as soon as they catch him, Ten will be able to do whatever he wants with him. Lin Yen and his friends were having lunch in their dorm room and discussing how everyone's day had gone. One of the guys told the rest of his comrades that tomorrow their classmate would have a date with a beautiful lady. The big man wondered what exactly the student meant. The guy said that Lin Yen was going to meet the beauty Lin Lulu from the music department. The third guy praised his friend and wished him a great date, but he also remembered the guy's promise about martial arts. Lin Yang began to laugh it off and said that martial arts required talent. The conversation between the friends was interrupted by a guy who kicked open the door to the room. 
These were thugs who looked older than the guys and wished the guys bon appetit. One of the students stood up and asked the impudent guy who he was and why he came here. The bully walked towards Lin Yen and asked if this was the student who bullied his brother. Lin De Hai also came through the door and confirmed that this was the same guy who beat him. Lin Yen told the bully that it was him, and he also added that he would now attack his elder brother if they did not leave. The big man called the teenager a brat and said that he would now be responsible for the pain he caused his brother. Friends warned Lin Yang that the scumbag had brought a knife with him. The bully promised the guy that he would die a painful death and attacked him with a cleaver in his hands. But the teenager himself was not afraid of knives, so he, as before, grabbed the offender's hand and began to squeeze it. The knife fell to the floor, Lin Yen sent his opponent away from him with a knee strike to the chest. The hooligan's accomplices looked at the guy, and the student himself asked them if they wanted to get it too. The guy asked the hooligans for the last time if they wanted to fight or would they just leave without injury. The guys did not dare to confront the student and said that they would prefer to resolve everything peacefully. Lin Yen ordered the hooligans to drag their defeated friend out of here and think next time if they wanted to fight him. The guys immediately abandoned this idea and assured the student that they would never contact him again. The thugs took their beaten leader by the shoulders and carried him through the front door. Lin Yang called Lin De Hai over and asked if he remembered what he told him. The teenager reminded that if the bully came to him again, he would break the bully's nose again. Lin De Hai admitted his guilt and immediately apologized to the guy for such a vile act. The bully knelt down and begged Lin Yen not to break his nose, and he also swore that he would never cross the guy's path again. The guy showed condescension and ordered the unwanted guest to immediately leave the room. Lin De Hai quickly ran out into the corridor and thanked the guy that at least this time he left without injury. The guy's classmates called him very strong, they could not expect such skills from a student. Lin Yen decided to show modesty and said that these were ordinary guys from the streets who were not that difficult to beat. The next morning, Lin Yen met with Lu Lu and the couple went to the same aquarium. The girl noticed the huge pool and told the guy that these fish looked very strange. The guy decided to laugh it off and said that they usually taste better if you salt them. The student reminded the guy that they were on a date and asked him not to arrange grocery shopping there. The student said that behind this aquarium there is a seafood restaurant, so it makes sense to choose them here and cook them there. The guy thought it was too boring and the fish were useless if they couldn't eat them. A gasping man was running near the aquarium, with wounds on his arms and shoulders. Lin Yen paid attention to the poor man and realized that something had happened to him and now he needed help. The guy told Lulu that he was going to buy food and the girl asked him to come back quickly. The teenager himself decided that it was worth finding out more about what happened to the man. While escaping, the man wandered into the toilet, where he found an empty stall. The wounded man immediately ran into it and fell powerless to the floor. All this time, a man with prominent tattoos on his neck and hands walked behind the wounded man. Lin Yen turned his attention to the guy and saw that some kind of black aura was emanating from him. The guy thought that the aura looked very creepy and assumed that the man had killed a person before. When the guy passed by the student, Lin Yen felt a strong cold, which alerted him. The guy tried to open the booth, but the man asked the pursuer in Japanese to stop. Lin Yen overheard what the man said and realized that if the wounded man spoke a different language, then he was a foreigner. Nevertheless, the pursuer's attempts were crowned with success and he managed to break the door handle to the stall where the man lay covered in blood. The attacker took out knives from his jacket and pointed them towards the poor man. Lin Yen had been spying on this situation all this time and when he saw the knives, he realized that the boy wanted to kill a person. The student could not just watch how a person was being killed, so he rushed to fight off the knives. The prodigy's reaction was enough to catch all the knives, although the teenager himself was surprised by this. The guy asked the pursuer if he thought he was too far away to kill him. The attacker tried to swing the knives again, only this time towards the guy, but he didn't succeed. Lin Yang successfully knocked out the offender with one wave of his hand. The guy approached the defeated bandit and asked what the man could do to annoy him so much that he wanted to kill him. The man himself, who was being hunted, rose to his feet and thanked the guy for his help. The foreigner said that he could speak his language and thanked the guy again. Lin Yang asked why that guy wanted to kill the man, but the foreigner said that they couldn't stay here for long and advised them to leave quickly. The guy hinted that he didn't have much time, saying that he came here with his girlfriend. 
The man said that he lived in the nearby Jinbi Hotel and the guy could take his girlfriend with him, and Lin Yen himself realized that his interlocutor was rich if he lived in a grand hotel. Lin Yen nevertheless followed Lu Lu and they, together with the mysterious foreigner, went to the Jinbi Hotel. The man walked the couple along the hotel corridor and asked them to follow him. Lulu was worried about the two tickets she bought and asked her lover why they came here so suddenly. The man himself decided to answer the girl and said that Lin Yen was his old friend and he just wanted to invite the two of them when he saw them. The man also said that he has several tickets to this aquarium and he will be able to give them a little later. This proposal pleased Lulu and she agreed, putting all her questions aside. The man pointed with his hands to the door, which was guarded by two girls, and told the couple that they were here. Lin Yen immediately noticed the two girls, they had an interesting glow that was different from Lulu and Rong. The guy examined the girls again and decided that he needed to find out everything about them. The girls began to serve the guests, and Lin Yen could not take his eyes off them due to the strange aura. The student thought that they looked like foreigners and he needed to get them somehow. The guy's thoughts were interrupted by Lulu, who noticed his gaze and pinched his elbow. The girl asked her lover not to look at the girls like that. The man introduced himself as Kato Yuan, he also introduced the girls, they served the young master, sisters Ozawa Ran and Ozawa Shu. Lin Yang remembered adult movies and said that if a man has the surname Kato, then he must be good at using his fingers. The guy realized that he had made a bad joke and said that he was a student at a university nearby. The student remembered why they came here and asked Kato in more detail what happened at the aquarium in response to which the man asked if the guy knew the Six Consortium, the guy said that he had not heard anything about this and wondered how he could know about a foreign consortium, the man began his story by saying that he is the butler of the first consortium of the family house of Master Matsui, a week ago, the master came to visit Huashio, but the master could not stop him, so Kato came to China with him, sister Ozawa and thirty bodyguards, but an unpleasant surprise awaited them, the master died of illness on the second day after they left. At the same time, a killer was waiting for them on the spot and now all 30 guards have been killed. Lin Yang immediately challenged himself, could he defeat the enemy of the first consortium? Lula didn't understand what they were talking about at all and thought that they were now in a film. Kato Yuan knelt in front of the guy and began to bow to him, pronouncing his first and last name. Surprised by this, Lulu and Lin Yen asked the man what he was doing now and why. The man said that China is a big country with many miracles, he also remembered how the master told him about people with strange powers and therefore Kato assumed that his savior was one of them. Kato begged Lin Yen to help protect their young master, who was being hunted. The guy said that the man should not cry and tried to lift Kato to his knees, and he explained that the student would have to protect the young master for seven days. Then Kato will have people to take the master back to his homeland, the man also said that when things get better, Matsui will generously thank the student. Even the sisters knelt in front of the guy and pitifully asked him for help. Lulu whispered in the guy's ear that the foreigners were asking him so pitifully and asked if he could help them. The guy thought that thanks to the large consortium, it would be good for him if everything went smoothly, but if he lost, it would be terrible. But the guy had a reason to help the foreigners, he had to get the Ozawa sisters or he would regret it for the rest of his life. The guy ordered the foreigners to get up and assured them that he would help protect the master. A little girl came out in response to the loud noise in the hallway and asked why it was so loud in here. Lin Yen decided to ask again if it was really the young master, because the child himself looked like a little girl. Kato Yuan explained to the young master what kind of guy was standing in front of them and that he could help them. The young master shouted in Japanese that this was amazing news and looked at the student. Kato explained that this is their young master and his name is Diyun Mitsius, he also said that the child was impressed by meeting Lin Yen. The man asked Ian if he could stay with him, because this hotel was causing too much attention. The guy said he lived in a university dormitory and couldn't stay there, but he had a place. The place where the student wanted to place the foreigners turned out to be the house of his friend Rome. The girl met the guys and asked if these were the friends the guy mentioned earlier, seeing the whole company. The girl asked the guests to go inside and opened the door for them. To begin with, the girl offered the young master and Kato something to drink from the bar. Lin Yen sat next to Lulu and his lover asked her boyfriend how he knew this girl. The main thing that embarrassed the student was Rome's appearance, especially her gorgeous figure. The girl attacked with questions, 
because the guy said that they were friends, but now seeing her, she doesn't think so. Lin Yang told his girlfriend that he could explain everything, but asked him to do it later when they helped the foreigners. Lulu had tears in her eyes, and she said that she understood that they had not been in a relationship for so long and she should not meddle in his past, but the girl considered herself the only one with the guy. The teenager asked his lover to stop and said that she could ask him about everything tonight. Despite the fact that the guy promised to tell everything today, Lulu was still very offended and upset. Roan walked around the guy and pointed out to him that his friends were not so simple. Lin Yang asked the girl if she needed more money for the company to survive. The frightened Rong said that they were needed, but assured that she was looking for other ways to obtain them. The guy took Kato by the shoulder and said that this was his sister's house, which means the guests would need to pay rent. Kato thanked the girl for her good-natured welcome and said that they would definitely be able to pay the rent, about $10 million a day. Shocked, Rong asked about the amount of payment, because she could not believe the reality of this amount. The student said that this was a decent payment and asked Kato to start paying right away if he had money with him. Kato said that the guy was right and asked him for a bank account where he should send money. Lin Yen asked the girl to give her bill, but Rong said that it was too much and she wouldn't be able to take that much. Kato explained that he considered this amount even insufficient, so he asked the girl not to refuse. Rong thanked the guy for such help, and the modest Lin Yen said that she should not do this. The student looked at his phone screen and realized that now was the time for his temporary job. The guy said that he needed to go to one place and added that Mitsui should go with him so that he would protect him after everything. Kato expressed his dissatisfaction and said that taking the young master outside would be too dangerous. The guy said that he had an idea, but the boy himself felt that this would all end badly. The sisters went into the master's room and when they came out, they giggled a lot and said that everything was ready. The young master was dressed in a little schoolgirl costume, now he was indistinguishable from a girl. Rong said that she found her children's clothes, which suited the little master very well. The guy showed his approval to the sisters and Rong, after which he praised their work. The boy began to examine his new clothes and told everyone not to be considered a girl. Rong and Lula sat next to a capricious boy who was trying to tear his clothes. The angry master blamed Lin Yang for everything and wanted to attack him. The student explained to the child that someone wants to kill him and if the attackers succeed, his family will lose everything. Kato translated all the guy's words to his master and asked if he wanted this outcome. The young master was overcome with sadness, and he realized that the guy was right and it would be safer in schoolgirl clothes. Kato relayed the words of the young master, who confirmed Lin Yen was right and called him amazing. The student himself appreciated that the child did not cry like the others, but accepted it so quickly. The master also asked the guy not to tell anyone about this, because it was very embarrassing for him. Lin Yang, of course, chuckled at the master's appearance, but assured that he would not tell anyone about this. Kato said that the master communicates with Lin Yen like an older brother, and this is a very rare occurrence. After the master came to terms with everything, Rong said that he could take Lulu to the university. The guy thanked the girl and, taking the master by the hand, went with him to work. The little boy watched Lin Yen carry heavy boxes of rice in the warehouse. Next, the young master admired how the student threw water bottles high. The child was also impressed by the guy's last job, where he cut up pork. The boy said in his own language that it was amazing and Lin Yen thanked him. The student did not fully understand Japanese, but he thought that the kid was complimenting him. The guy realized that in order to protect the child he needed to stay in the apartment, which meant moving essential items from the dorm. Lin Yang and the young master went to the guy's room, where his classmates were waiting for him. Witty neighbors said that the guy had been dating Lulu for only a couple of days, but they already had children. First, Lin Yen asked his friends if they were crazy. One of the friends patted the child on the head and said that they would help him smile. The neighbors immediately began to squeeze the child's cheeks and called him a beautiful and little girl. Before leaving, Lin Yen explained to his friends that he would have to live somewhere else for the next few days, so he asked them to cover for him. A classmate asked his friend why he was leaving, had something really happened to him? The guy thought that this was the best reason to confirm his lie, so he said that this was his cousin, whose mom and dad divorced and it was difficult for her psychologically. The guys were amazed by this story and they said that the poor girl had a very difficult fate. Lemmy said that the poor girl would be fine and reached out to kiss her on the cheek. 
All the other friends did the same to support the unfortunate child. The kissed child remained sitting on the floor and did not understand why the students were kissing the boy. Lu called Lin Yan's phone and the guy hurriedly picked up the phone, believing that it was something urgent. The girl told the guy that they should meet in an hour in a cafe for a serious conversation, and she also added that Rong told her everything. The frightened guy realized what awaited him and tried to understand how much Rong had told. Lin Yen took the young master and went to the cafe to see his beloved Lulu. The girl said that she wanted to talk in private, hinting that the child was unnecessary. The student assured his girlfriend that he still wouldn't understand anything, because he didn't know Chinese. Lulu got up from the table and shouted out a complaint to the guy that he hadn't told her anything. The guy said that there are reasons for this that are difficult to voice, he himself understood that he could not talk about his relationship with another girl when they first started dating. The girl asked the guy if he had any choice at that moment. Lin Yen himself didn't understand what he was talking about at all and just silently looked at his girlfriend. Rong told the student that she was drugged that night, so she couldn't help herself and attack the guy, but she managed to refuse him because he was thinking about Lulu. Lulu imagined how Rong pesters the guy, but he pushes her away and says that he has a girlfriend. The teenager also said that the girl could get his heart even if she used his body. Having heard this whole story, the guy exhaled with great relief and silently thanked Rong. The student thought about how he could be so calm, although that night, as he remembers, he liked everything. Rong also said that the guy whispered the girl's name all night while he slept, Lulu added that they should be open to each other and tell everything. Lin Yen felt incredibly relieved and called his friend Rong gorgeous. The girl took the guy by the hands and added that Rong would no longer disturb them and they could continue dating. The guy hugged Lulu and expressed great gratitude that the girl could understand him. The teenager approached his lover's lips and loudly said that he loved her very much. After Lin Yang's declaration of love, the couple merged in a passionate kiss. Immediately after talking with his lover, the guy went to Rong's house. The teenager knocked on the door and asked the girl to quickly come out and meet her. Lin Yen thought that although Lula didn't see this as a problem, what if the girl really left him? The girl slowly walked out the door and asked the guy where he was going in such a hurry. The guy scared Rong when he grabbed the girl's hand and pulled her towards him. The teenager hugged the girl tightly and asked what she meant when she told Lulu everything, did she really want to break up? Rong also hugged the guy and said that she didn't want them to break up, but Lulu would kill the guy. The guy said that he loved Zhuan very much and asked her to snuggle even closer to kiss the girl. Rong pointed at the young master and said that it was better not to do this in front of the child. The girl's phone rang and she quickly pushed the guy away to answer the call. At this time, the embarrassed Lin Yen pointed his fingers towards the stairs and suggested that the child look for his grandfather. The guy took off his outerwear and hinted to the girl that they could now spend time together. The voice from the phone called Rong his beloved and noted that they had not seen each other for a long time. Lin Yen immediately recognized Wang Ziting's voice, so he became very angry and began to look at the girl furiously. Rong pointed out to the guy his impudence for calling her after everything that happened and wished that next time he would be beaten to death. Lin Yen thought that he would rather talk to the scumbag himself and snatched the phone from the girl's hands. The guy called Ten a bastard and warned him not to call here again if he didn't want big problems. Rong tried to return the phone and said that Ten was quite an influential person, so it was better not to anger him. Lin Yen himself was not embarrassed by the guy's status, and he said that he was not afraid of his influence and connections. Ten asked the guy who he was and Lin Yen replied that it was better for him not to know his name. Angry, Wang Ziteng asked the guy for information about himself in order to send him to hell. The student replied that the businessman could call him his justice. Wang Ziteng was seriously angered by the guy's words, and he threatened him with death. An influential guy promised the arrogant student that he would kill him within three days. Rong tried to calm Ten and said that Lin was reckless and stupid, she asked the director not to touch him. Wang Ziteng was furious that someone dared to go against him and promised the guy death in terrible agony. Lin Yen himself was not afraid of Ten so he himself invited him to show him everything he was capable of. The beaten director threw his phone on the floor and shouted that he would kill the guy as soon as he left the hospital. A bodyguard came to the screams and asked his boss why he was so angry. Ting ordered the guard to immediately start searching for Rong's boyfriend and bring him to him so that he could abuse him before he died. 
The bodyguard asked the boss to rest and promised that he would bring the guy today. Frightened Rong stood next to the guy and could not find words to describe her emotions. Tears appeared in the girl's eyes and she asked why Lin Yen did this. The beauty slapped the guy in the face and said that he had signed his own death warrant with his impudent jokes. The girl, in tears, pressed herself to the guy's chest and said that no one wants to mess with Wang Ziteng in this city because they are afraid of his strength. The teenager hugged the girl and assured her that no one would get hurt and everything would be fine. Rome did not tolerate this and, pushing the guy away from her, asked him to leave her house after calling Tenu. Lin Yang said that he knew everything about the guy and about his money, and influence, and the fact that he did a lot of bad things. The guy pointed his finger at himself and said that he was protecting Mitsui's from killers while working three jobs. The student asked the girl not to worry and reminded her that Wang Ziteng had recently been beaten in front of journalists. Lin Yang said that it was him, the guy couldn't just watch some rich man drugging a girl, so he beat him up. The guy realized that it would not be easy, protecting Mitsui's and fighting Wang Ziteng, this could not be solved with fists alone. But the guy remembered the weapon that he took from the killer in the men's toilet at the oceanarium. The guy decided to try out the knives and threw them at the wall so that they stuck inside. On the first try, nothing worked, Lin Yen understood that his strength and speed should have been enough for the knives to pierce the wall, but he was let down by the unfortunate angle of the throw. The guy decided not to despair and tried to thrust the throwing knives into the wall again. The guy set himself a task and promised that he would do it, even if it took a million attempts. Five hours later, Rome heard strange sounds in the guy's room and decided to see what he was doing there. The girl said that five hours had already passed since the guy locked himself in the room. Entering inside, the girl saw huge destruction around and a lying guy with knives in his hands. Lin Yen called the girl over and said that he would now show her an interesting trick. The guy threw the knife at the concrete wall and it went into it like butter. Rome looked at the knife that was stuck in the wall and asked who the guy's teacher was, assuming it was a kung fu master. The guy said that the girl watches too many movies and explained that this is the result of hard training. The girl laughed and tapped the guy on the shoulder and said that he was doing great. The student reminded his beloved that Wang Ziteng's bandits should come here soon. The teenager said that he should go and look around, he advised the girl to stay put, and he climbed out the window. As soon as the guy landed, he saw a small group of people near the front door. If the guys in suits notice a hidden ninja, they will immediately call for help. Lin Yang read on the internet that this corporation is closely connected with crime. The guy decided for himself that for a better outcome it was worth neutralizing each guard in turn. The teenager unexpectedly hit the first guard in the face and he immediately lost consciousness. Two guys who were standing nearby heard a rustling sound and began to look around trying to find the guy. But Lin Yang himself found the two guys and knocked them out with a beautiful kick in different directions. The third guard was no longer so simple and pointed a gun at the agile teenager. But even this could not stop the guy, with a deft movement he took out a throwing knife and sent it straight to the bandit's chest. The student stood next to the corpse and realized that the gun had frightened him and he had thrown the knife reflexively. Rome came out of the house and wanted to make sure that everything was okay with her loved one. The girl saw that there were no thugs and asked Lin Yen if he had hurt himself while jumping out of the window. The guy said that he was not hurt and Rong noticed that the teenager was always walking behind her back. The guy asked the girl to help him find large bags and take her car so that they could run away faster. The girl was able to find large black bags and Lin Yen had already packed Ting's people into them. Frightened, Rong opened the trunk of her car and asked the guy what was in these bags. The guy explained that these were Ten's people whom he had dealt with and now he needed to hide their bodies as quickly as possible. Rong still didn't fully understand what had happened, but decided that it was worth listening to the guy. Lin Yen loaded all the body bags into the car and the couple drove away from the house. In the morning, Lin Yen woke up at the Rong house, feeling tired after all the events of the previous night. But Rong came to the aid of the tired guy, greeted the guy and invited him to eat at the table. Kato was also at the table who wished the guy good morning and the teenager asked how he slept. The man said that the guys made a lot of noise last night, so he stayed to protect the master, and he also asked about the people who were outside the window. Lin Yang said that protecting Kato with the master was his job and the guests should not worry about their safety. Master, Kato, Lin Yang and Rong gathered together at the table to have breakfast. 
The guy asked his beloved if she was going to go to work today, and the student also asked the girl to pick him up after school today. The teenager patted little Mitsui on the head and asked if he wanted to go to college with him today. Kato translated the words of the child, who said that he was interested in spending time with his bodyguard and would be happy to look at his college. Lin Yang called Mitsui a good child and reminded him that he would have to play at being a little girl. Kato said that after yesterday's events, he was starting to get a little worried, so he would send Ozawa Shuya to help fix some problems. Lin Yen was only pleased with this news, and he willingly agreed to take one of the sisters to his college. The student and the little master accompanied Rong to work, and the guy asked her to be more careful on the road, and he also reminded her that he needed to be picked up after class. The girl replied that she would pick up the guy after class without any problems and left for her work. Before heading to college, Lin Yen gently took Ozawa Shuei's hand. The girl was immediately surprised by such an act, and the guy justified it by saying that he could not lose his sister. Ozawa Shuei thought about it for a while and finally accepted it, after which the couple went to college. Next to Lin Yen and Ozawa's sister, envious students immediately paid attention to the guy who brought his family to campus. The students also paid attention to Rome, who gave a lift to the happy family in her car. Every guy who watched this was sincerely jealous of Lin Yen, who changes girls so often. Lin Yen liked the way the guys looked at him and said that he felt very strange looks on him. The couple entered the audience and their classmates also did not remain indifferent to the guy. One of the guys noticed that in addition to the beauty, the student was also leading a little girl by the hand. Lin Yang explained to his friend Luo Yang that he brought his friends to college and asked him to sit back. Luo Yang was angered by the fact that his friend had a new girl every day and he asked how many more of them he needed. The embarrassed student tried to meet the girl, he introduced himself and asked her name. Ozawa Shuei immediately guessed that this guy was a friend of Mr. Lin, which means it was better not to be rude to him. The girl did not speak Chinese well, so she simply said hello to the teenager. Luo Yang himself did not know what to do next and began to stutter, remain silent and awkwardly look at the floor. Lin Yen said that his friend looked like a pig when he looked at girls and could not move, and the guy also lied that this was his cousin and it was better not to stare at her. The guy immediately realized that Lin was lying and said that he completely forgot about his friends as soon as he had girls. Behind the couple stood another classmate, who reminded Lin Yen that he already had Lulu. A classmate asked the guy why he continues to hang out with other girls when he already has Lulu. The guy hugged Ozawa's sister and asked if his classmate could share at least one. Ozawa Shuei was dissatisfied with this attitude towards herself, but she couldn't do anything about it now. Classmates paid attention to what was happening in the audience and mistook Ozawa Shuei for Lin Yan's girlfriend. The cocky guy continued to insist on his own and asked his classmate to leave this girl to him. The frightened sister stood in the hands of the bully and did not understand what to do with Lin Yan's classmate. The guy himself came to the rescue, pushed the offender away with a light blow and ordered him to get away. A classmate told the guy that he understood him and called him to come to the backyard of the university if he was not a coward. Lin Yen didn't even think about retreating and said that he would definitely come to fight him. Luo Yang also asked to fight, but his friend asked him to stay and assured him that he could solve everything himself. After class, in the backyard, as previously agreed, a crowd of people gathered and surrounded Lin Yen and Ozawa Shuei. The guy told the girl not to worry too much and allowed her to beat anyone who annoys her the most. The guy pointed his finger at the prodigy and said that he had no reason to be afraid of their company. The bully ordered his boys to go after the teenager, but Ozawa's sister stood in the way. The girl herself knew martial arts, so she had no problem beating one of the guys. Another guy tried to attack his sister from behind, but this did not bring any success. The girl knocked out the last hooligan with a kick, after which she and Lin Yen left the university grounds. After the fight, the guys went to the Huanan market to eat and wait for Rome. There was a huge assortment of food at the market, and funny poems about dishes were heard from all the shops. One half of the market sang about fried stinky tofu, and the other about fragrant dumplings. But the most exotic thing for foreigners seemed to be bats, which cost 5 yuan. The sister approached the guy and said that she didn't understand Chinese that well, but she heard about fried stinky tofu. The guy said that this was a very tasty dish and invited the girl to try it. The young master also liked the local cuisine and called all the dishes delicious. 
Ozawa Shuya herself did not really like the local cuisine and she called the local food strange. Lin Yang explained to the guest that everyone has different tastes and it is impossible to make perfect food. While the guy was having lunch, a girl's hand reached into his pocket and tried to steal his wallet. The student immediately sensed the pickpocket's movements and grabbed the thief's hand. The girl began to squeal and asked the guy to immediately let go of her hand, while calling her a pervert. The guy asked the pickpocket why she had just touched him, and she, in turn, denied everything and continued to call him a pervert. The guy pointed to his torn pocket and asked the girl to explain it. The embarrassed thief pretended that she wanted to apologize and seemed to be trying to admit her guilt. But this was not so, she said that the guy had strong enough hands and he tore his own pocket. Lin Yen grabbed the girl by the cheek and told her that she was trying to steal his wallet, he asked her to sew up the hole in her pocket, threatening to take her to the police station. The girl began to ask the guy to let her go, and she also said that he would regret it if he continued. Lin Yen became interested and asked the pickpocket to show what she could do. The girl started screaming that a pervert was pestering her in order to attract the attention of others. A crowd of people believed the thief's words and immediately began to condemn the guy, assuming that he really was a pervert. The guy saw the reaction of the crowd and decided that he, too, could show some tricks, so he called the thief his sister and began to scold her for her connections with hooligans. The crowd immediately changed their minds and began to condemn the girl for not respecting her parents and brother. The thief started screaming that this was all nonsense and she wouldn't go anywhere with this guy. Lin Yen looked at the girl and asked what tricks did she have left in stock for such a case. The girl kicked Lin Yen directly in the groin and once again called him a dirty pervert. But the teenager's reaction was enough to intercept the thief's leg and secure his treasures. The girl broke away from the guy's hands and ran away in tears, continuing to call him a freak and a pervert. Ozawa Shue's sister volunteered to help and asked if she should catch up with the thief, but Lin Yen replied that it was no longer that important. Now what worried the teenager most was that Rong never came to pick them up, her sister assumed that she had some business to attend to. The guy took out his phone and said that in this case the girl would have called him to warn him. The phone was answered by Ten, who said that Lin Yang was registered in the girl's contacts as a baby, which means she knows how to flirt. The scumbag asked the guy if he knew who he was talking to now. Of course, the teenager recognized Wang Ziteng's voice and threatened to kill him if even one hair fell from Rong. Teng was thinking about what happened to Xiao Liar's squad, did the student really manage to kill them? The scumbag said something great and added that he would first send the guy some photos that he would like. The student said that he agreed with all of Ten's conditions, but asked not to touch Rome. The scumbag invited the guy to an abandoned factory in the northern countryside at 10 in the evening, he asked for the opportunity to beat Ling Yang in exchange for the girl's safety. The student replied that he agreed, but once again asked that the bandits not touch Rome. Ozawa's sister asked Lin what happened, but he said that it did not concern them and asked to take the young master home. The guy also asked the girl to be as careful as possible at home. It was already night outside, more precisely 10 o'clock in the evening, and Lin Yang was standing in that very place near an abandoned factory. The student called the bandit and notified him that he had arrived, after which he asked where he could find Rong. Ten told the guy to relax because Rome was now in the building and the teenager would be able to talk to her if he got there. Joyful Ten was sitting in his room and one of his girls was feeding the guy cherries. The bandit thought that Yu Sang should have already prepared by this time, which means he should call him. The guy warned his subordinate that the teenager would come soon and asked him to cripple him and then throw him right in front of the tied-up Rome. Yu Sang said that he could easily do it, but he also asked about the girl, hinting that she should also be killed. Ten told his accomplice to brush off these ideas because their parents had a good relationship. Yu Sang reminded her that she could report to the police at any time and the boss, after a heavy sigh, allowed her to do whatever he wanted. Yu San, in an abandoned factory, told Rong that they can now do whatever they want with the girl. The kidnapper put his hand on the girl's face and said that she would definitely like it. The girl did not just tolerate the scumbag's bullying and bit his palm. The guy threw the tied girl aside and said that under no circumstances would he just kill her now. The girl warned the kidnappers that they would greatly regret what they wanted to do. Yu Sang asked the girl how she had not given up yet, and the bandit also added that he would rape the girl right in front of Lin Yen when he arrived. 
The same teenager they had been hunting for for so long appeared behind the bandit and grabbed the scumbag by the hand. The guy asked the kidnapper to repeat what he had just said, and he responded by asking where the rest of the bandits were. Lin Yang turned the bandit's torso towards his accomplices, who were already dead. Frightened Yu San, looking at all the corpses, asked if all his accomplices were dead. The guy began to squeeze the scumbag's hand with great force and San simply could not escape. As a result, the teenager managed to break the thug's forearm, while the bandit himself shouted at the entire factory. Yu Sang begged Lin Yen to let him go and asked for forgiveness for everything he had done. The prodigy did not accept the guy's apology and hit him with a strong blow to the chin. The bandit fell to the floor and began asking the guy what he wanted to do with him, but Lin Yen was too angry to answer the scumbag's questions and simply continued beating him. The guy was distracted from beating by the tied-up Rong, who called him by name and called him to her. The student told the girl that he should have come earlier, and then untied the poor girl. Rong burst into tears and immediately ran to hug her savior. The guy tried to calm the girl down and said that everything was over, but she insisted that she couldn't believe that she had survived. The girl looked at Yu Sang's wounded body and asked if the scumbag was still alive. The teenager said that he was fine, the bandit just needed to rest a little. The girl asked what Lin Yen was going to do with the kidnapper and the guy replied that he would urinate on the scumbag until he woke up. Ron looked contemptuously at her beloved and said that this was very disgusting. Lin Yen told the girl to turn away despite the fact that she had already seen everything. Yu Sang was passed out for a long time and woke up with salt water running down his face. The teenager took out a knife and threateningly asked the scumbag, which hospital was Wang Ziteng staying at? The scumbag begged not to be killed, and Lin Yen said that in that case he would have to speak faster. The bandit said that Ten was in the 365th ward of the central hospital, and he also added that he was from the Black Cannon group and should not be killed. The teenager processed all the information and asked how many people were in the bandits group and where their headquarters were. The guy said that there are about a hundred of them with weapons each, they usually take care of the safety of Ten's company, and the group also follows all his orders. The teenager looked at Yu Sun and said that now that he knew everything, the bandit was useless. The frightened bandit began to scream so that the guy would not kill him and give him the opportunity to leave. But Lin Yen was too determined and reiterated that the bandit was already useless. Rong returned to her home, where she met Kato, the man asked the girl what happened to her. Instead of the girl, Lin Yen answered, who told the man that it was not that important and it was already over. The guy told the girl to look at herself and offered to help her in the bath. Kato looked at the couple again and came to the conclusion that Mr. Lin really liked beautiful girls. Meanwhile, Wang Ziteng's father arrived at the abandoned factory with a group of doctors who loaded the bodies. The doctor told Mr. Wang that all the guys died from simple blows, and Yu Sang's skull was broken. The man said that all his bones were pierced by human fists. Mr. Wang asked the doctor if he was sure that a skull could be broken with a fist. The doctor said that he was absolutely sure of this and now there was a real mess going on in the skull. His father called Wang Ziteng's room and his son happily greeted his father. The father told about an unsuccessful outcome in an abandoned factory, but the son refused to believe it. Mr. Wang asked his son to get out of the hospital immediately before the teenager came to take revenge. The father called his son an idiot and explained that he had contacted a dangerous person and the hospital would not be able to protect him. Mr. Wang ended the conversation with his son and said that things were very bad for them. The man called Mr. Su and asked him for the best mercenary he could find. Mr. Wang swore that the restless teenager would die in a matter of seconds. The next morning, Lin Yen lay in bed after another hard night. The guy was woken up by Rong, who played with his nose and asked him to wake up quickly. The guy hugged the girl and asked if she wanted to relax a little in the morning, to which she asked him to stop. All the guests of this house were sitting at the table and Lin Yen asked Kato how things were going with them. The man said that everything was gradually starting to come under control and they would return home in a maximum of two days. The guy said that this was great news and suggested that everyone have breakfast now. The teenager also invited the maids Ozawa Ran and Ozawa Shuei to the table. The guy's phone was called, and he remembered that he had already seen this number from Rong, which means it was Wang Ziteng. The guy gave all the information about the student and asked if he had reached the right number. 
Lin Yen immediately decided to ask the influential guy what he needed from him and why he decided to call. Wang Ziting told the guy that they should forget about it and suggested that in the future none of them create problems for each other. The guy said that he admitted his mistake and contacted the teenager in vain, and he also added that he was afraid of him. A joyful Lin Yen asked, is such an influential person really afraid of him? Ting replied that he was serious about this, now Lin Yen can do whatever he wants with his people, and the director also transferred $1 million to his account so that the guy would leave him behind. Ten's father snatched the phone from his son's hands after he repented. The teenager wondered what happened to Wang Ziteng, was he really afraid of him? The scumbag's father answered the phone, introduced himself and said that he knew about the guy's strength. The man said that they should compromise and Lin Yang agreed, only he warned Mr. Wang not to threaten his family. Rong asked what happened, and the guy replied that Wang Ziteng's father urged them to compromise. The girl expressed some concerns and ironically asked if they had really changed so quickly. The teenager said that it was in their own interests and if they did not change, they would pay dearly for it. Rome drove the whole company to the university in her car and the guys began to say goodbye to her. The guy wished the girl a successful journey and added that no one would kidnap her again. Lu stood behind him. Behind the guy stood Lulu, who was literally burning with jealousy, and the teenager said that he had an unpleasant feeling. The angry girl said that the guy had crossed all boundaries and asked why he didn't even call her. The student said that he was very busy and added that the girl should be in class now. The beauty threw her arms at the guy and said that she didn't care about her classes and that today she wanted to be with him. Lula looked at Ozawa Shue and asked if her lover slept with another girl today. Sister Ozawa thought to herself that Lin Yen was truly charming among girls. The guy told the girl that he needed to go to class now and asked her if she wanted to listen to lectures on medicine. Lula said that the guy shouldn't worry about it, the main thing is that she is nearby, to which Lin Yen agreed to take her with him. The girl pointed to an empty seat and invited the guy to sit there. Li Xiaohong appeared in front of the couple and asked Lin Yen if Lulu was his girlfriend. The guy confirmed the words of his classmate and said that he and Lulu looked great. The beauty was a little embarrassed by the guy's words, she really liked it when he praised her. Li Xiaohong laughed and said that her classmate was really good at chasing girls. The girl herself thought that it was really difficult for a guy to date two people at the same time and at the same time make sure that they were not jealous of each other. The teacher asked for silence in the classroom and announced that the lesson was starting. The guy's rings worked again and Li Xiaohong felt that she suddenly became hot. But most of all this was noticed by Lulu, who thought that every time she was next to a guy, she saw some kind of dreams. Lulu realized that the more she was with the guy, the stronger this feeling became and she could not get used to it. The girl began to twist her hands and Lin Yen asked her what she was doing. The horny girl asked the guy if they could just leave here now. The student said that he should first finish reading the chapter that will be useful to him in the future. While the girl was reading about traditional medicine, Lula began to make very provocative sounds. The girl realized what she had done, so she immediately covered her lips with her hands so that it would not happen again. All the guys in the audience immediately noticed this and began to think, what is Lin Yen doing with his girlfriend? This was also heard by a teacher who asked who was making this strange sound. Embarrassed, Lin Yen told his teacher that they urgently needed to leave the classroom for a short time. The guy ran out of the office with his company and tried to understand what was happening here. Lin's roommate looked at all this and couldn't believe that his friend brought two girls at once today. The guy took his girlfriend to the park and asked what was happening to her this time. The girl threw the guy's hand away and blamed him for her strange behavior. The beauty began to cry and said that now rumors would spread because of her sounds in the classroom which means Lin Yen should take all the blame on himself. The teenager was outraged by these accusations, and he reminded the girl that she herself asked to go to class with him. The guy noticed that the girl was blushing and, pressing his hand to her forehead, asked if she had a temperature. The girl again felt a sharp surge of feelings and realized that it was all because of the guy's touches. Lulu pushed the guy away and asked him not to touch her anymore just like that. Frightened, Lin Yen looked around and asked what was his fault this time. Ozawa Shue decided to upset the guy and said that it was really about him. The sister said that when she is near the teenager, she also experiences strange feelings. Lu again what was going on? The girl looked to the side and said that she couldn't just talk about this feeling. The guy pulled Lulu close to him and asked her to talk about this feeling, 
and he would hold her until she explained everything. The beauty tried to escape from the guy's hands and asked Lin Yen not to touch her anymore. The girl asked him to stop because she experienced this feeling again. Lula said that every time this happens she wants to hug the guy. Lin Yen began to remember how he kissed Lulu and realized that such a feeling definitely helped then. And that night when he spent it with Rome, it means that girls fall in love with him when they are around. The student collected his thoughts and realized that he should do research, he had a very bad feeling. Surprised, Ozawa Shue asked the guy what exactly he wanted to do and why was he looking at her like that. The teenager asked the girl to relax and said that he would just conduct a small test. The girl tried to resist, but Lin Yen still managed to place his hand on her shoulder. After the guy put his hand on his sister's shoulder, he asked if she felt something strange. The girl covered her face with her hand and confirmed that she had a strange feeling. The sister's knees began to tremble and a strong fever ran throughout her body. Lulu watched all this with a huge feeling of jealousy and it was difficult for her to contain it. The girl hit the guy on the shoulder and ordered him to stop touching the other one. The beauty said that this is not only the case with them, but literally all the girls he just stands next to lose control. Lin Yen looked first at Ozawa Shue and then at Lulu and asked, what should he do now? Lula said that they need to figure out why girls become like this as soon as they see him. The guy asked the girl not to be nervous and reminded her of the night when they kissed for the first time, he said that he saw light around her. Lin Yang said that as soon as he saw the light around the girl, he couldn't just leave her. The guy took the girl by the hand and told her not to worry, and he wouldn't leave her. Luli's mood rose, and she asked again, is it true that the guy will not leave her? Lin Yen replied that he would not go anywhere because the girl's red light gave him strength and energy. The guy said that if the girl didn't believe it, he could prove it in some quiet place, but the student refused. While Ozawu's sister was watching the student's drama, Kato called her phone. The girl told Lin Yen that people had already arrived who could take them back to their homeland. There were about 30, maybe more, identical sports cars parked near Rome's house. The bodyguards formed a small corridor with their bodies to meet the young master. Rong met the guy and explained that all these people were here to bring baby Mitsui home. The joyful child saw his people and joyfully shouted for them to bow. All the bodyguards bowed their heads in respect to Lin Yen. Kato explained that their little master told the guards everything in Japanese and they expressed their gratitude. The man also said that they would agree to any request from the student if he needed help. The kid took the student's hand and joyfully began to play with his fingers. The teenager said that he really liked Mitsui and would be happy to help the kid again, and he also asked to come visit him at least sometimes. Kato called the guy a good man and handed him the dragon card that belonged to their house as a sign of friendship. The man persistently held out the card to the guy and asked him not to refuse it. Lin Yen did not refuse the gift and accepted the dragon card with a smile on his face. Kato asked the master if this was all, but he pulled the man towards him and whispered something in his ear. Ozawa's two sisters over to him. The young master told the man that Lin Yen really liked the Ozawa sisters, so the little guy decided to leave them in his company. Now, by order of the young master, the Ozawa sisters will become Lin Yan's maids. Although this news might have pleased the guy himself, Lulu and Rong were outraged that their beloved would have maids. The guy asked if the sisters agreed to this and explained to Kato that he did not need maids, which means the girls could return home. The man said that the sisters were the best maids in their family and asked Lin Yen not to reject them, especially since they would be able to do whatever the teenager wanted. The guy looked at the angry Rong and Lulu and decided that the girls had decided to compromise among themselves. The student looked at the sisters for a long time and realized that they were so sweet and he would not forgive himself if he missed this opportunity. The guy thanked baby Mitsui and said that the Ozawa sisters would be able to return home whenever they wanted. After a short conversation, the kid ran to his people and waved his hand to Lin Yen. The teenagers also said goodbye to the child and said that they could meet again someday. The guy was sitting surrounded by new maids who tried with all their actions to please the new owner. Ozawa Shue fed the embarrassed guy from her hand, showing all her concern. Ozawa Ran also tried to please the new owner and offered to give him a massage. Rong and Lulu stood next to each other and literally burned with jealousy, the girls could not just watch all this. The student asked if the guy liked the service of the new maids and hinted that he should refuse the massage. Rong was also unhappy with the new residence and ironically said that Lin Yen was very lucky. 
The guy himself understood what the girls were getting at and asked them to be a little easier. The new servants followed the guy who couldn't hide from the girls. Lin Yen became angry and asked the girls to stop following him, citing that he wanted to be alone. The girls immediately began to cry after the guy's screams and he had to calm them down. Ozawa Ran asked in tears what they were doing wrong and why did their new master hate the sisters so much. Rong said that maids of large families are specially trained from childhood, they are busy from a very early age, and all their goals are to serve the master. If they are lucky and can make the master happy, they will be able to marry him and gain partial freedom. But if they don't succeed, then they will be treated like an unnecessary thing and that's where the maid's life ends. Ozawa Ran asked the guy not to hate them and to tell them if they were doing something wrong. Lin Yen was surprised that such a form of slavery still existed in their time. The guy asked Rong to take Lulu away so that he could deal with them, and the girl began to suspect something. Rong obeyed the teenager and took the girl into the kitchen so they could have a snack. The guy sat down between the maids and said that he didn't hate them, but that he just felt hot when the girls were around. To confirm his words, Lin Yen tenderly kissed Ozawa Shuya's sister's forehead. The first sister felt very aroused, and the guy also did the same to Ozawa Ran. The girls began to giggle gently and smile at the teenager. Ozawa Ran rubbed her hair against Lin Yan's hand and thought that the new master liked her and her sister. The guy's hand touched the girl, and she felt strong feelings for the master. Ozawa Ran pulled the guy's face towards her and Lin Yen himself thought that this was too unexpected for him. Ozawa Ran was very close to the guy's lips and was already preparing to kiss him. The guy was afraid that if he pushed his friends away now, they would cry again, but Rong and Lulu could see everything from the kitchen and this also scared him. The teenager decided that he should just forget about everything and kiss his sister once, which he did. The sisters were overwhelmed with emotions, but then Rong came with a plate in her hands and said that the food was already ready. The whole company sat down at the table and Rong invited her new friends to go with her to the office. Lin Yen decided to lighten up the awkward situation and asked the girl what is the turnover of money in her company. The beauty replied that she only started last year and borrowed a lot from her father. She also reminded the student that he helped her earn 7 million, which she could not have received even in 10 years of work. Rong told Lulu that she could go with them, and then they would all go to the western beach, but the student did not have a swimsuit. But the hostess took care of this in advance and said that she had recently bought four swimsuits, which means everyone could go. The guy imagined how the girls would look in swimsuits and called it a real gift of fate. Rong with Lulu and Lin Yen walked along the corridor of the girls' company, where the rest of the workers looked at them. The company employees immediately noticed the guy who was walking surrounded by girls and called him lucky. Lin Yen also felt eyes on him and realized that most of the men here were jealous of him. Rong said that the guy is surrounded by beautiful girls, so he should get used to such attention and invited her friends to show off her company. One of the guys greeted the boss and asked her to introduce him. The guy appreciated Lin Yen and, looking at how he attracted the attention of the girls, decided that they would find a common language. The guy's name was Yang Ku, Rong ordered him to mind his own business and get to work right away. Yang Ku did not argue with the boss and hurriedly headed back to his workplace. Lin Yen asked Rong to tell him more about this strange guy. The girl said that Yang Ku is a good guy, although he is a little perverted, but he has a talent for creating advertising, which is why she keeps him in the company. Rong instructed her assistant to deliver the plan for her and said that she would not be returning to the office today. The girl said that she had finished her work and now they could go to the beach. The surprised student asked how she could only do one thing and Rong explained that she founded this company out of boredom, but realized that this work was not that interesting. A group of friends went to the beach, where the sisters looked at the water and Rong sunbathed. The only one who couldn't rest peacefully was Lulu, who threw the ball towards the guy and asked him to catch it. With Lin Yan's reaction, it was very easy to parry the girl's weak throw. But when the teenager himself hit the ball, he did not calculate the strength and it hit the girl right in the face. The beauty held her face and asked the guy why he threw the ball at her so hard, but he refused. Lulu threw the guy on his back and called the girls to punish him for his offense. The sisters and Rong immediately ran to the aid of their girlfriend and willingly punished the guy. The girls managed to sprinkle sand on the guy and Lin Yen said that at this rate they would never get married. Lulu jokingly said that they could take even worse revenge if he decided to bully them next time. 
the student suggested that the other girls go for a swim while the guy lay in the sand. But the guy had no problems unearthing himself and was able to rest his head on his hand. But the teenager's gaze turned to the water, where he noticed a man who seemed to be drowning. The man was floating suspiciously on the water and Lin Yen couldn't just take his eyes off him. At first, the teenager decided that this was all too suspicious and this guy might turn out to be Wang Ziting's man. The student decided that he had to be very vigilant and keep his eyes on the strange man. The man could not control the water and something pulled him to the bottom, the last thing Lin Yang saw was his hand, which asked for help. The teenager didn't think for a long time and immediately jumped into the water after the man to save him. The guy guessed that the man knew how to swim and that he was forcibly pulled under the water. The victim was held by two other men in wetsuits who tried to kill him. At one point, the man managed to escape from captivity, but the bandits were able to take him again. Lin Yen was already in a hurry to help, who guessed that two thugs were trying to kill the guy. The guy grabbed the intruders by the legs and threw them away from him so that they would not grab the man again. Lin Yen grabbed the victim himself by the collar and began to drag him to land. The student threw the half-dead poor man onto the shore and he began to greedily swallow air and cough. The man came to his senses and thanked the good-natured teenager for saving him. Lin Yen immediately asked the man, who were the people who wanted to kill him? The teenager was most worried that this could be connected with Wang Ziteng and he again wants to harm him or the girls, the guy needs more information. The man said that he urgently needed to go and wrote his phone number in the sand. The strange guy asked the teenager to call him later, and he said that he had urgent business. Lin Yang sat down on the sand and said that he would definitely cross paths with Wang Ziteng. In a small room, Mr. Wang met with Junior Lewis and asked if he had any difficulties on his way home. The guy said that he would always have difficulties because of his past, and he also asked for any task. The guy's name was Lu Lian, he was one of the best mercenaries who could quickly complete any job. Senior Wang explained that their target was a very dangerous person who alone was able to kill a dozen armed people. Lu Lian was not very afraid of this and said that although it was not easy, it was not impressive, the mercenary was most interested in the guy's characteristics. Wang showed a photo of the teenager and said that he was a university student, about 19 years old, he knew martial arts and he needed to be removed as soon as possible. Lu Lian looked at the photo and thought that 19 years old was too young, considering that according to the instructions, he was supposed to come for the terrible villain. Mr. Wang handed over a folder with information about the guy's place of residence and special features, and he also added that he didn't have to worry about problems with the law. The mercenary took all the information about the guy and took it with him, without saying a word to his boss. A joyful Wang began to celebrate his victory in advance and did not believe that the teenager could compete with the number one killer in the world. Lin Yang went to his college library and read books on the Chinese language. Ozawa sisters don't speak Chinese very well yet, so the guy signed them up for a few classes to help with the language. The guy thought about the textbook and doubted for a long time whether he should start learning Japanese. My classmates looked at the guy and couldn't believe that a student could study for six hours straight without the slightest rest. One of his friends asked and exactly Lin Yen became so addicted to studying. The teenager closed the textbook and said that it was already late, which meant he needed to go home, after which he got up from the table. The guy's friends looked after him and said that their neighbor had become too suspicious. Even on the bus, the student continued to read the book, sitting in his seat near the window. The guy was distracted from reading by a girl who accidentally bumped into his shoulder. The girl politely apologized and said that there were too many people here, so she didn't notice the guy. Lin Yen immediately felt something strange and noticed bright lights around the girl. The guy also noticed the strange and frightened expression on the baby's face. Behind the schoolgirl stood a strange and fat man who called her sweetie. The man extended his lustful hands to the girl's body and tried to pinch her. The frightened girl felt very awkward, but she couldn't do anything about it. Lin Yen came to the little girl's aid, grabbed the pervert by the hand and, in front of the entire bus, ordered him not to touch the girl. The man was indignant that he was not allowed to touch the girl and told the guy to let him go. But to this the student only squeezed the concerned fat man's hand even tighter. The teenager said that by the look of the man you can tell that he also has children, so he should be ashamed to do such a thing. The frightened man said that his arm was about to break and asked him to stop. 
the pervert began shouting at the entire bus for the driver to stop and intervene in the conflict. Lin Yen said that this scoundrel's hands should be cut off and began to squeeze his hand even more tightly. At the next stop, the guy pushed the man out of the bus and he fell onto the asphalt. The teenager told the pervert to never use public transport again and threatened that if he saw him again, he would beat him to death. All the passengers on the bus began to praise the guy and call him a fighter for justice. The fair student was also thanked by the schoolgirl whom he saved from the pervert. Lin Yen said that this was nothing for him and asked the girl to loudly call for help and scream the next time she encountered this. The girl bowed and said that she did not know how to thank the guy, but the student replied that he did not need anything. The schoolgirl asked if they were studying together, but Lin Yen explained that he was a university student and didn't even know where her school was. The girl offered ice cream as a token of gratitude for saving her from harassment and Lin Yen agreed. Everyone on public transport had already forgotten this story, but one man continued to look at the guy. It was Lu Yen who decided that he needed to follow the student first before killing him. 